In this video, we're going to make use of some of the theory we've learned in the time value of money and the NPV exercise that we've done and the sources and costs of capital. We're going to combine this all together in order to do a exercise. So this is quite a simple exercise about a Clint's construction business. He's considering a large capital project and he wants to know should he be proceeding with this capital investment and how does he help how do we help him make the decision so he has determined that the project will cost 840,000 rand up front and it will generate the following cash flows for the next five years and here the cash flows have been listed they tell us that the project would have no scrapping value or cash flow beyond the five years. So you can assume that this 300,000 in the last year is the last of the cash flows that will come from this business. The company uses a cost of capital, a WAC, to the nearest whole number, plus 3% hurdle rate for its projects. So that's the expected return that they want to get from this project. They're using a cost of capital and they're adding in, you might want to call it a fudge factor, a little bit of extra space in order to accommodate the risk. The expected equity returns are 18% per annum. The assets are projected to depreciate over the next four years, so we need to think about well, how is that relevant to us. The business has a total uh, capital ratio, debt to total capital ratio of 50%. That says to me half of the funding for the business and likewise for this project is in equity and half is in debt. So they're going to borrow the money, borrow half of the money. Tins Construction has borrowed its money at a nominal rate of 11%. In other words, that's the rate that the bank is charging. And we are to assume that the tax rate is 30%. So let's show some workings. Let's do some calculations. Let's determine what the NPV is for this project and then discuss if there are any other factors that we should be considering in order to help Clint's construction determine whether to proceed. So I'm going to bring in my spreadsheet here, my calculations in it, and we can explore how to go about doing this. So I'm going to start off with calculating the cost of capital for this business because I need to know the WAC or the discount rate to use in order to discount the future cash flows. And those future cash flows have been given to us in the case. So let's start off here. KE is my terminology for cost of equity and that is 18% that was given to us in the case. They told us that Clint's construction is able to borrow at 11%, so I've called that my prime lending rate, and we were advised that the tax rate is 30%. So the first thing I want to do is I want to take this lending rate and I want to adjust it for the tax benefit that I get from borrowing the money. And I do that over here by simply saying 11% times 1 minus the tax rate and that gets us to 7,7%. Now they told us that half of our capital comes in the form of equity so hence there's my 50% of my capital will cost me 18% and the other 50% of my capital will cost me 7.5%. So multiply these out what is 50% of 18? Well that's 9% what is 50% of 7,7 and that's 3,85%. Add those two to, together to get to the proportions or the cost of capital and I've asked Excel to round this up so that it only has two decimal places, well, actually not two decimal places, two numbers in it so anything that's beyond the decimal place will be rounded up to zero so that's rounded up to 13 because that's what they asked us to do add the three percent that gets us to 16 percent there is our discount rate okay so now what we're going to do is we're going to list the cash flows 
and it starts off in year zero, which is the current year, where we're spending the 840,000. And then here are the future cash flows that we expect to receive as was laid out in the question. 100,000, 250, 330, 400, and finally 300,000 in the last year. So then I want to use my present value formula, and you can see I've used that up here. I've said take C15, which is the 100,000, divided by 1 plus the discount rate, that's the 16%, to the power of 1 year. And that 100,000 then becomes worth 86,207. All right. The alternative is you could have gone to the tables, you could have seen if there's a 16% in the table, you could have got a discount factor for 16%, and you could have multiplied the 100,000 by a discount factor in order to get the present value. That would have got us to pretty much the same answer. So here, I'm, because I'm using an Excel spreadsheet, and because I've correctly allocated these, to the right boxes. I've put some dollar signs in here on the on the 16%. So when I copy and paste this right, everything should move along nicely. And let's see what happens in the next year. So we're discounting 250,000 by two years at a discount rate of 16% to get to that present value number. Do the same in year three. 330,000 discounted by three years at 16%, etc etc. Now what we can do is we can sum the negative 840 and all the future discounted cash flows and we will get an answer here that is 7165. Here's a cumulative calculation and you can see the number in the N cell is the same as the NPV. And effectively what we've done here is we have shown that the NPV is positive. Therefore, the returns that they will get on this investment will be higher than 16%, which is the minimum requirement in order to proceed with the project. So therefore, they would proceed with this project. What are the other factors? Well, some other things that might happen in the business is, for example, what if we got a negative uh, in NPV? Well, then we might look at the project and say, well, is this a maintenance of existing assets? And if we don't maintain these assets, will the business likely not survive in the future? That's something to consider. We might also consider if we have to proceed with this investment because of regulations or statutory requirements and therefore we really don't have a choice. That's something else we could consider. If we wanted to get the NPV up, we might consider possibly being able to negotiate with the bank to get a lower debt cost you would have to demonstrate to the bank why it's in the interest to do that, maybe because you're a lower risk business for whatever case, and therefore our discount rate would come down. So if we could borrow our money at say 9% instead of 11%, we would get a change in the, in the discount rate. So it wasn't enough to adjust this by very much. So that because we've got a big fudge factor here and because we're rounding these numbers, it's, it's not as sensitive to the, to the lending rate. But then what we might do is we might ask ourselves, can we get the capital equipment for a cheaper price? Can we go and negotiate that with the supplier? And then you would also relook your cash flows in the future and ask yourself, how can you increase those cash flows? How can you reduce your expenses? in order to get more cash in, in order to adjust and make a better NPV number. All right, so there we have done the calculations for Clint's construction. We've used sources of capital, we've calculated the cost of capital, we've discounted the cash flow, and in the end, we're able to determine 
that this is a good investment to proceed with.